Hello, and welcome everyone to the Q&A session for our upcoming video course, The Awakened Feminine of Tara, Embracing the Loving Wisdom and Bold Truths of the Feminine Buddha. The seven week journey to embody the wisdom and love at the core of who you are. My name is Anne Patricio, and I'm really excited to be with you to host this Q&A call today for the Shift Network, where we'll be exploring the teachings of my guest, Lama Paldendroma, and address her questions, your questions for her about her upcoming seven week course with us, The Awakened Feminine of Tara, which begins Tuesday, November 13th. Later in the call, I'll explain how you can participate in this course, even if you can't join us live. But first, I want to welcome my guest. Lama Paldendroma is one of the few female Buddhist lamas in the world. She's the author of the forthcoming book, Love on Every Breath. She completed the Tibetan Buddhist three-year, three-month retreat under Kalu Rinpoche, guidance in 1985, then becoming one of the first women to be authorized as a Lama in the Buddhist traditions. Lama Paulden focuses on translating Tibetan Buddhist principles and practices in ways that make them accessible to Westerners. Also a psychotherapist, Lama Paulden was profiled in Shambhala Sun magazine as one of the women changing the face of Buddhism. In just a few minutes, we're going to open for your questions, but first, I want to welcome Lama Paldin, who will begin our call by leading us in a meditation. Welcome, Lama Paldin. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome to everybody who's on this call with us. So, yeah, let's begin with a short meditation, and you can close your eyes if you like and get in touch with your breath. And just now we'll just use this moment to just relax and let go and just feel yourself, feel your breath, connect with your breath. Breathing into yourself Connecting with open heartedness to yourself. And on the out breath, just relax and let go. This is a really good opportunity for us to just come into this present moment and come into peace that's here right now with us. And as you breathe into your heart, just feel the connection there with yourself and meet yourself with kindness. And then on the out breath, as you relax and let go, you can let that kindness radiate out as well. And then let's call upon Tara to be present with us the blue-green main Tara in the sky in front of you. She gazes down at you with her loving compassion, looking at you like you're her only child with that kind of love. She looks at everybody with that kind of love, the love of a mother for her only child. And see if you can open to feel the awakened love of Tara radiating to you, imagining her there in the sky in front of you, gazing at you with love, radiating love to you. Each of us 
is completely worthy of awakened love. The Buddhas, the awakened beings love each and every one of us equally. Understanding that in who we truly are, in our true nature, in our pure being, we are all beautiful, illuminated, unique, delightful beings. And then now feel that from Tara's outstretched right hand, a a stream of elixir of awakened nectar, this blue-green in color, light, made of liquid light, streams down from her hand into the crown of your head and streams down into your body, bestowing her blessing, her soothing energy, helping to bring your whole mind-body system to peace, and bringing the nourishment of the divine feminine right into you. And for this time is we can just let go of all worries and concerns And we can pray that beings throughout our world, that we all are able to open our hearts to live in cooperation, in harmony, and in kindness. We can also imagine, you can imagine if you like, that all beings are receiving Tara's blessing, this liquid stream of light going into each and every being, bringing peace, bringing healing, and helping to awaken the heart. Feel Tara's blessing, her love, acknowledging that you yourself are a worthy person. A person with your own unique talents and gifts. Your own unique purpose. Your own hopes ideals, dreams, and just receive the acknowledgement of this from our universal mother, the awakened mother, Tara. And now feel that Tara then dissolves into light. You yourself dissolve into light. Let everything dissolve into the great open sky. And simply rest your mind just as it is. Right here, right now.
Thank you. I think we could open up for questions now, Anne. Thank you so much for that. I felt uh, very nourished and grounded from that. So thank you. Oh, wonderful. So, we'll spend the rest of our time together exploring your questions for Lama Paulden as we prepare for her upcoming course, The Awakened Feminine of Tara, which begins Tuesday, November 13th at 12 noon. If you'd like to check out the website and learn more about her seven week video course and find a link to register, please visit awakenedtaracourse.com. That's awakenedtaracourse, A-W-A-K-E-N-E-D-T-A-R-A-C-O-U-R-S-E.com. Now let's get started. If you have a question for Lama Paulden, just type it in and I'll be happy to read it out. We had many people send in questions on our webcast ahead. So I do have some, uh, this one from Ali. What is the best way to connect with and express Tara's energy in daily life and in everyday ways? Hmm. Well, that's a big question. We'll definitely be exploring that much more in depth in the course. But the first thing is to really realize that when beings awaken, they don't disappear. They become ever present and uh, they're not bound by time and space. So you can call upon Tara. And when you call upon her, really in the beginning, we really imagine that she comes and we imagine how she looks and we visualize her. And over time, this becomes more and more real. So as you call upon Tara and then meditate upon her over time, the experience of her becomes more and more real. And as this happens, you feel her qualities, the awakened feminine qualities, which are, of course, in all of us. And beginning to feel those awakened qualities in yourself, then we can uh, embody those and um, allow these awakened qualities to stream through us, to manifest through us in our day-to-day -day activities and life. Thank you so much for that. Hiseo asks a question that I'm assuming others might be asking. Be a male, being a male, does it really serve me to awaken my female side? Also, this course seems to have a lot referring to the body. Are we not already quite enough identified with the body? And indeed that identification is one of the main obstacles to awakening to our true nature. Okay, so really two questions. Uh, let me uh, answer the first one first. So I've had many male students who've done extensive TAR practice and they say they have just benefited hugely. I actually, in fact, uh, some of my male students have had the most profound transformation through doing Tara practice. It's really transformed their lives, the feelings inside of themselves, the way they relate, it's been huge. So I think all of us have masculine and feminine inside of us. And within Tibetan Buddhism, we seek to bring both of these aspects to awakening. They both have um, wonderful qualities and strengths and they're very complementary. And as we know, the universe is uh, comprised of yin and yang. It's male, female in an endless dance. And these parts of ourself can come into awakening and into dancing inside of ourselves and in our world as we manifest our activity in the world. So yes, I think for men, it's equally beneficial to meditate on Tara and make that connection. It's very profoundly both uh, transformative in terms of one's life and on the spiritual path. And in Tibet, uh, t all the men and all the monasteries all did extensive Tara practice and said that they had a lot of benefit. 
Now, in terms of your second question, no, the body is not an obstacle to awakening. The body is our vehicle for awakening. And yet it's not the identification with our physical body that we want to pay attention to it. Like your question said, if we over identify with the physical body, we think that we die when the body dies. And we think that we're injured when the body is injured. But the body is really our vehicle for meditation, for awakening, for activity in the world, for enjoying being a human being, enjoying our world, the beauty of our world. And in the awakening process, it's incredibly important to be embodied, to be in touch with our bodies, to be awake in the body. This is what creates the transformational process that helps us with awakening. So awakening itself is not purely a mental event. It happens also in the body as all the subtle channels of the body and the prana that flows through those subtle channels and all the um, essential energy, what's called bindu in Sanskrit, of the body is transformed and liberated into awakened um, flow of prana through the channels, through the nadis, and all this essential energy is awakened as well. So the process in the body is very important for awakening. It's just that we shouldn't overly identify just as a physical being. The subtle body, which is an energetic body, is what is being really transformed during the awakening process. And that process is very beneficial for the physical body as well. It brings health and ease and comfort and more of a sense of peace. So we really want to be at one with everything in our experience. We want to be with one with it, with a sense of appreciation and loving kindness. So that is important in our relationship with our body. And in Vajrayana Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism, it's called a precious human body because it's such an extraordinary vehicle that we have here at this time. (laughs) Thank you so much. Here's one. I'm familiar with white and green Tara, but wonder about the qualities of the other colors of Tara and when, how one would work with these manifestations of her. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful question. So uh, yellow Tara, and we'll be going into this a lot in the course, but the, the yellow or golden Tara is, has the activity of bringing increase like say we need um, um, an increase in our meditation time. We need to be able to maybe bring more spaciousness into our life so we have more time to meditate. Maybe we need uh, an increase in our financial situation so we can also ask Tara for worldly things as well as spiritual things. Say that we would really like to, um, yeah, maybe uh, have enough money to study more in depth spiritually or something, to travel or to take courses. We can pray to Tara. We can, so increase has to do with material plane things like maybe um, we really need rain for the crops and. These material plane things are aids, they're supports for us in our awakening process. And maybe um, there's, um, um, we really want to pray to Tara, the yellow Tara, for increase in our understanding, in our realization, in our compassion, in our ability to love, or we want to in- increase, you know, um, our courage or something. So the yellow tar really has to do with increase and with generosity. The um, uh, green, uh, well, green tara also, which you might not be aware of, has the um, quality of awakened activity. And we could also uh, really open into this transmission from green tara that 
we are able to bring much more awakened activity into the world. Like say we want to um, campaign or we want to try to stand up for certain causes we believe in, that kind of thing, or we want to start a new business or something, um, then Green Tara, you know, can help with that. With Maybe we want to start a business that brings together benefit for beings across the world and brings makes money at the same time to support those efforts. So um, then in terms of, um, say, like um, the blue, the blue, black Tara, the dark, uh, dark blue, black Tara, she is very fierce. So say we really want to uh, have um, more development in terms of our courage and our strength and our fierceness. And this kind of fierceness is based on love, but it's strong and it doesn't back down in the face of oppression and things like this. So there's many different qualities and activities and we'll be going into those in more depth in the course. Thank you. Thank you. Lindsay says, hello, and thank you for the beautiful teachings of Tara. My question is, aside from the different geographical locations and countries, which name the mother goddess as Kuan Yin, what do you feel the differences between the energies of Tara and Kuan Yin? Um, Kuan Yin is the Bodhisattva of compassion. And in Tibet, uh, actually called Chen Rezi and it has different names in different cultures and very similar to Tara except that and I don't actually know a lot about Kuan Yin because I haven't studied her in depth because that has to do with uh, Chinese Buddhism which I'm not proficient in so I'm not really aware if she has the full spectrum of awakened qualities that Tara did if she has a really fierce aspect a very sexual magnetic aspect if she has, I know she has pacifying aspect, which the Bodhisattva of compassion in general in most Buddhist countries has a primary activity of pacifying, uh, pacifying conflict internally and externally. And of course, all of the Taurus um, and Kuan Yin bring awakening, but um, so I'm not sure if Kuan Yin has this full spectrum of the awakened feminine like Tara uh, does. But this in Tibet, this is very unique. And I think in a lot of the um, female awakened beings or saints or sages, it's unusual to see such a full spectrum di display of various qualities and activities. Both Tara and Kuan Yin have a very, um, very, very similar feel of the Divine Mother, the Universal Mother, the Mother that really cares about each and every sentient being and really ex wants to extend her love to each and every sentient being. Thank you for addressing that question. Suzanne is saying that she was, uh, it was suggested to her that she should turn to Green Tara to meditate and uh, that that would be particularly helpful for her. And um, she's asking, is it her qualities that I'll meditate upon that will be helpful or just the fact that I will be focused and meditating that will be helpful? It's all of it. There's in this kind of meditation where you're doing an imagination visualization that, as I said, becomes more and more real and palpable over time, you're doing mantras, you're, you're praying, you're receiving transmission at various times in the practice, different things happen. We radiate our own awakened presence to all beings. Um, various things happen in the meditation. We'll be going step by step through all of this in the course. So all of this is very powerfully transformational. And each different aspect of the meditation works on us in a different way to help liberate us and help awaken us. So 
um, yeah, there's all these various different aspects that happen. So all of it is has uh, transformational properties that function in various ways. And in fact, I've been meditating in Tibetan Buddhism for almost 40 years, and I'm still seeing and learning how these different kinds of meditations affect me and and help to uh, awaken me. It's an unending process of discovery, I think. Thank you. Uh, Elizabeth is um, asking for people who have a challenge meditating due to brain issues like ADHD, uh, adrenal focus issues, um, brain uh, damage and issues. What do you recommend for them to still connect with the energies of Tara? Well, I think... Uh the main thing is to take a very simple part of the practice. So, uh, and that depends on the individual, what works best for the individual. So for some people, it might be that they just chant the mantra and maybe feel the blue green light of Tara in their heart. And that might be very focusing and stabilizing for the mind and something that they can connect with whether or not they have um, you know certain kinds of attention and other brain issues. But for another person, it might be just gazing upon Tara imagined in the sky in front of, of, of you or maybe just gazing at a painting, a, a photo of Tara and just gazing at her in that way. So there's all these different aspects of the practice. For people that are very sensate, sometimes just imagining this feeling of this nectar coming down into you, even feeling Tara's hand right above your head, the presence of that with this streaming Amrita nectar coming down, more of a felt sense is better for some people. So depending on our own individual makeup, we can pick one aspect, a simple aspect, and just really focus on that. And this will actually help um, if help ADHD calm down. It'll help uh, develop more focus and attention, capacity and ability, uh, not only for meditation, but in our daily lives. It'll help us learn to concentrate. And Depending on what kinds of issues we have, um, we definitely can develop our concentration and focus. All of us can do that. So it's a question of you know, trying different things if you have these kinds of issues and then seeing what will work. But there definitely will be an avenue for you. Carlotti is asking, she's uh, saying, at 68, I have no dreams. For two years, I'm looking for something that will excite me again and bring meaning to my life. How to find a new dream? And how would you recommend that Tara and which particular Tara practice might be assisting her? Well, we'll all learn the green Tara practice first. So it's very important because she's the essence of all of them that we really connect strongly, you know, with her. Um, and then from, from that, you know, branch out to all the other Taras. So we'll always start with her. I think that this is, uh, you know, I'm sure there's many different ways this could be approached. First of all, I think... In the Tara meditation that we'll be doing, it'd be really helpful to really pray to Tara about this issue and to explain to her that you don't really have any more hopes and dreams at this point. And in that question, when I, I feel into it, I feel like a sort of a sense of discouragement a little bit and depression. And so I would pray to Tara about that and pray to her to help your own inner inspiration be lit up again, 
be um, awakened, you know, and, and come to life inside of yourself, your inspiration and your your joy in exploring the inner and the outer world. So I think if you really pray about that to her and talk to her about it and talk to her about your feelings and then really ask for her help, this is actually the kind of thing that Green Tara herself is the main one that would be really, really helpful for this. In a sense, it's kind of removing the obstacle of apathy or depression, despair, discouragement, um, you know, kind of um, blah kind of feeling. It's removing that inner obstacle to really connecting with your own curiosity and joy and the, the part of you that does want to dream and wish and learn and grow and connect and everything. So I think it's, it's great. I think that you would, um, the course could be really helpful for you in this. We've, we've all found the people that have been doing Tara meditation have found a lot of inspiration coming through the practice. That's really lovely. Um, Lama Paulden, we have a few questions from people offering sp specific questions, such as a loss of a, of a child and, and dealing with the ache in the heart and um, looking for ways to regain that sense of life again and relieve themselves from depression. Am I hearing you say that green Tara is really the one that will be the best answer for that or the one to assist? Yes. Um, Need to yes. new possibilities. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Sorry. Um, um, yes. Definitely, Green Tara, and to bring your sorrow, your grief, uh, to Tara, to lay your heart bare, to actually allow yourself to feel the grief and the sorrow, and present that to Tara and ask her to um, now at this time to bring you to peace and to comfort you in your grief and to, um, yeah, to really comfort you in your grief and to ask for her loving kindness to really soothe you and to heal your heart and uh, in that way, I think um, talking to Tara, being with Tara, and then really feeling her transmission and energy really soothing your heart, healing you. And of course, say in something like the loss of a child, that it, grief is never going to totally be gone. But our hearts can heal, we can come to peace, and we can um, definitely wish you know, that being that we've lost, you know, all love, all joy. And in the ultimate sense, we're never actually disconnected from those that we love. Um, we never actually um, die in the sense of who we truly are never dies, our awareness, our consciousness, our body passes away, but then we go into different realms or we reincarnate into this one. And it actually, through Tara too, is possible to connect with our loved ones um, on that level and pray for them and send them blessings as well. And that also can be very comforting and feel um, very relieving in, in terms of our grief process. So there's a variety of ways that we can work with Tara meditation and call upon Tara to help us in terms of great loss and grief. Thank you so much. So if you're just joining us, we are here with Lama Paul Dendroma learning about her course, The Awakened Feminine of Tara, which begins on Tuesday, November the 13th. Please log on to awakenedtaracourse.com for all the details and to register. We'd love to have you join us. So Lama Paulden, I have a question um, from someone that joined us on Facebook asking, how do you define awakening? 
Oh, that's a huge question. How to define awakening? Uh, in Buddhism, it's defined. Um, Sometimes I say it's not the California weekend awakening. It's what they call in the tradition full and complete awakening, which means that all karma is completely purified and uh, liberated. We no longer are at the mercy of any karma. And all our qualities, all the awakened qualities are brought to full and complete fruition and and, uh, activity, action. So... And one is no longer really at the effects of various phenomena. One, one's state of mind, one's state of being is at peace, in joy, in love, um, regardless of circumstances. You know, whether our, the circumstances are very supportive and wonderful and beautiful or whether they're extremely difficult and challenging, one is no longer affected by that, but able to rest in awakened wisdom and love and in um, full manifestation of one's qualities so that rather than being at the effect of these various things, one becomes a vehicle for the wisdom and the love to actually manifest and benefit all beings. Great, thank you so much. So we have time for a few more questions, but before we take those, I just, I wanna give you a few details about the awakened feminine of Tara. So it's going to be transformative, as you can tell. It's seven weeks with Lama Paulden. And as you can tell from her intro call and our Q&A call, the guidance is exceptional. And um, you'll experience the embodiment of the awakened feminine within you as reflected by Tara. So the seven-week course will take place on Tuesdays at 12 noon Pacific, starting November the 13th. Now, if for any reason you're unable to join the live video calls, you won't miss the teachings. We send out, um, we have a course homepage, virtual classroom for you, where we post all the replays, the video and the audio replays. You'll have access to the handouts and also the transcript so you can stay up on the course. Uh, I'd also like to remind you that we offer a no risk money back guarantee on all of our courses and giving a full two weeks in this case until December the 4th to make sure that you absolutely love this course. And as an added option, all participants are welcome to join our private Facebook community group, and that allows you to stay connected with one another and share thoughts and experiences in the course. Uh, When you register, you receive the Awakened Feminine of Tara bonus collection, and that includes uh, the following bonuses. The Spiritual Path, which is an audio teaching by Lama Paulden. Personal Journey and the Ego, which is also an audio teaching by Lama Paulden. And the third is an article, a PDF by Lama Paulden, How to Practice Dedicating Merit. And we also offer this very special bonus if you're inspired to register by midnight Pacific tonight, a Tuesday, November the 6th, you'll receive an additional bonus. Brilliant Wakefulness. This is a guided audio meditation with Laman Paulden. And in this guided meditation, uh, you'll be guided to connect with yourself in a felt sense way in the body, aligning with your heart and finding softness and tenderness in the moment and bringing loving kindness to meet your experiences of the self and other while being at rest with yourself. Just sounds lovely. All of this sounds tender and really supportive. So Lama Paulden, I would love to hear um, just what you're most excited to share with uh, those who join you on this journey for this course. Oh, well, it's, it's really um, inspiring me to hear people's questions. And I think what... I'm most inspired to share with this course is that Tara can really help us connect with our own awakened heart and our own awakened wisdom in a way that brings us deep, deep nourishment, deep peace, 
but also really encourages us in our activity in our daily lives. And I, I know that um, the times that we're in for our human family are very challenging right now. And a number of us uh, are worried about our human situation and, um, you know, many aspects of that. And I think in sharing about Tara with you and teaching about Tara meditation, all of us doing this together, I think that this can be incredibly helpful on a real day-to-day basis for people, especially during these times, to be able to connect with our own inner wisdom and joy and strength and courage and all of this with, you know, with our, um, of course, primarily with our awakened wisdom heart. So I'm really touched and moved about the interest in the course and uh, really excited to bring Tara and be a vehicle um, to bring Tara to um, many of you. (laughs) Well, we're thrilled to have you with us at the Shift Network and for this course. It's really exciting. Uh, Melody is asking which Tara practice will be taught during the seven weeks. Uh, the green, the white, the red? Well, we'll focus, as I said, starting with green Tara. The All the other, she has 21 emanations, white, um, green, blue, yellow, red, and deep blue, black. Um, so we will be um, primarily focusing on green Tara, but then focusing on her other aspects at different times during our seven weeks together. So on a a certain session, we will uh, call in one of the Taras in particular and work with certain aspects of her um, at certain times as well. So, and, you know, I'll be uh, teaching and explaining more about how she manifests in these different forms. Nice. Thank you. Practice. (laughs) I was just going to say the essential practice is the same, but you switch your focus and what you're, who and what you're meditating on for her various aspects. So we turn our attention to her um, different aspects at times. Yes. And might someone be attracted or drawn toward a certain uh, one of the certain aspects of her more than others, and what would that mean? Yes, that's a really good point, and very much so. And I think there's some very interesting way in which each person has their own um, connection with a particular Tara. And I think people will discover that during the course when we meditate on different Taras. Like for some people, they're just inexplicably, inexplainably, unexplainably drawn to white Tara, and they just feel a very close connection. Other ones, it's the green Tara. Other ones, it's red Tara, yellow Tara, whatever. So, and this may change at different points in our lives, but often there's one that uh, there is a consistent thread over time where we feel a very deep and profound connection with a particular one. So that's very individual. Thank you for that. Uh, James says, I have been dedicatedly practicing Sitamanti Tara for five years at the direction of my guru with whom I've had a good relationship. However, I feel almost no connection to Tara and can't really even visualize her face. Is it some sort of karmic block? What? I'd appreciate some help, he asks. Hmm. I I would try what my teachers told me, which is really start having heart-to-heart conversations with Tara. While you're, um, you know, you can stop in the formal practice or you can do it simultaneously with the formal practice you're doing, which is the way that I trained in doing that. But 
um, as you're doing your Tara practice and meditating on her, also either stop and take some time or do it simultaneous with the chanting or whatever. Really pour your heart out to her. Really talk to her. And really also open as much as you can to actually feel her presence. And as we do this and somehow through our really opening our heart and pouring out our hearts to her and really talking and simultaneously really opening to receive her over time, I think you will be able to find a much stronger felt sense connection with her. Sometimes we, you know, the formality, the technical part of the meditation gets overemphasized compared to the feeling aspect. And I was personally very, very fortunate to study with many of the great Tibetan masters, like the really leading teachers of the 20th century from a variety of lineages. And they all always said the most important thing in this kind of meditation practice is the felt sense of the connection, of the presence. So I think focusing in that way and the dialogue with Tara really helps that to happen. Wish you well Thank you. with that. Thank you. Thank you, James, for that question. Um, and when you say pour your heart out and that uh, really speaking to Tara, uh, is it done just through speaking and meditation? Do you um, suggest writing? Is writing beneficial to Tara? Well, I usually do it uh, just quietly, you know, inside myself, talking to her directly, mind to mind. But um, it's writing can be very, very helpful. So that is definitely another avenue. And one could sit in meditation, call upon Tara and really connect with her and reflect on her qualities and stuff. And then, um, you know, uh, if it helps you to concentrate, then you could write right inside the meditation. But um, I think um, that might help some people. And then over time, I think you could let that go and just mind to mind talk to her directly in your meditation. And that will be a more direct. It's kind of the difference of um, Skype and email. You know, if we're writing and connecting by email or say you're texting, it's kind of like writing to her is kind of like texting her where in meditation without any of that, you're, it's more like Skype. You're just directly there. So if it helps to focus and to get your thoughts really all out there, I think it could be a very helpful tool in the beginning to connect. Yes. I hope that's helpful. Yes, that Skype connection. That was a very good metaphor for it. So thank you so much for that. Um, Kajal is asking, do we need to do formal meditation to invite Tara into life? Or can we invite her to be with us in everything we do in any given day? Thank you. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. And that's wonderful. Uh, but the formal meditation, the concentration during formal meditation is what helps the connection and the felt sense to really um, become palpable in us. And then it's much easier to actually connect with her moment to moment in our daily lives. But for sure, um, we can ask her to always be with us and accompany us and help us and help to remove our inner obstacles of doubt and depression and anxiety and fear and, and help us to remove our outer obstacles of not having everything that we might need for our journey. So Zara says, Tara came to me in a healing by a shamanic practitioner. I've never heard of her before. Why would white Tara come forth? Good question. I mean, I don't think I can answer that. Um, but 
awakened beings activity is ever present. Their love, their awakened wisdom is ever present. And there must have been something in you that was open to her, to receive her. And a part of, you know, your own awakened presence that we're usually not in touch with, but that has a connection with Tara. So there's something, some kind of connection that you have. And there was an openness in you, I think, that whether or not you were consciously aware of that at all, that was present and then allowed her to show up. There was, you know, it's almost like a tuning. There was some attunement between the state of being you were in and Tara herself. Uh, we have one last question here. Um, are there mantras and devotional songs for Tara, specifically for white Tara, this person's asking, but for Tara in general? Yes, there are. There is a mantra for each and every different Tara, as well as the primary main Tara mantra. And what was the other part of the question? Um, oh, uh, devotional songs. Uh, yes, there uh, are devotional praises, songs for um, the various Taras. There's a long, what's called the Praises to the 21 Taras, which is a devotional song to all of the, each of them have a verse in that whole thing. And it's also said that um, it's also praising the primary blue-green Tara, the turquoise-green Tara, who all of these are uh, within her. But yet also each of the particular Taras is praised and is um, given devotion in a particular verse. That's great. Thank you. Um, well, you know what, we do have time for this one and I wanted to get it through. Could you suggest how to work with Green Tara in ways that she might help heal developmental trauma? Um, a lot to do with rebalancing of the nervous system. So I won't mm. be caught in experiencing people through chronic fight and fight and flee. And this just sounds like something that's so common for people today is this fight or flight situation that so many people are in right now in our times. Yeah, I'm really glad we had time to take this question because this is one of um, Tara's main activities. This is her expertise to help remove anxiety and fear out of our systems completely. Now, it doesn't mean, you know, we're not going to be alerted to danger, you know, if, you know, there's a truck all of a sudden crossing the road or whatever, but to um, actually... Um, help to dissolve all the past, you know, whatever is still in our nervous system and in our psyches and our bodies left over from the past, anxiety and um, reactive patterns and all of this. So this is uh, really her very primary activity is to, to help release all of this out of our system. So the soothing energy of Tara, when her nectar streams into us, that is the place where the whole calming of the nervous system happens. And as I was talking in the beginning of the call about the rewiring of our subtle bodies, and now we know through neuropsych research that it's not just metaphorical. It's not just that our subtle bodies, our energy bodies, but also our brains are being rewired. So I think that in a very real way, uh, those neural pathways can be healed. Our nervous systems can be healed. And this is really the big, huge blessing of Tara that this can happen. So I'm really delighted we were able to talk about that. And I would uh, really encourage people who have trauma in their backgrounds. Of course, it's very important also to do psychological work around this. But Tara can be a huge help um, in relieving these uh, old patterns and healing from these old patterns and relieving that uh, fight or flight um, reactive response. Well, this has been a wonderful hour with you, Lama Paulden, and 
I want to thank all of our viewers who are here, everyone who posted such beautiful questions and uh, shared yourself with us today. The Awakened Feminine of Tara starts Tuesday, November the 13th. Again, I urge you to please visit awakenedtaracourse.com to learn more, awakenedtaracourse.com. You can learn about all the modules, the details of this rich course and all that's in store for you. And you can also register there. And remember, if you register by midnight Pacific tonight, Tuesday, November the 6th, you'll receive this additional bonus gift, brilliant wakefulness, the guided audio meditation with Lama Paulden. So Lama Paulden, do you have any final words for our listeners? Um, just to those who might be sensing a call to this course. Well, I'm struck by the um, that today in America is election day and that we're having this uh, <laughs> Q&A session live on election day. And I'm just um, struck by that, that I think Tara can really help us to remove our obstacles for our human race right now and moving forward and for us individually as well as collectively. And um, so that's very exciting and inspiring for me. And I very much look forward to sharing uh, Tara further with everybody. And I hope that you all will sign up and we'll be able to meditate and share together in uh, healing and nourishing ourselves and bringing ourselves to peace, to where we can find our inner peace and encouraging us in our daily lives. So I'm very much looking forward to being with all of you. Well, you make it so accessible. Uh, that's what I really appreciate. And I want to thank you so much and deep, deep gratitude to you, Lama Paulden, for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anne, and to the Shift Network. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today. And on behalf of all of us here at the Shift Network, we wish you well. And I look forward to having you on this course or on one in the future. Be well. Thank you.